Well, hello again, and welcome to Upgrading SSAS. Uh, we're going to talk about both upgrading the tabular model and the multidimensional model. Uh, I'll cover the multidimensional side, and my friend Paul will cover the tabular side of this Thank you, my friend Jim. Presentation. Side-by-side <laughs> uh, uh, -side upgrade gives you two versions running concurrently. It's a good way to verify that... Uh, uh, your queries, your reports, your analytics that uh, use the cube as, as a data source uh, are working well. In place, of course, is more risky because it does replace the earlier version and it may be very difficult to put Humpty Dumpty back together again if, in fact, uh, uh, you need to reinstall from an earlier version. Always have a backup. Yes. Always yes. have a backup. Yes. Um, moving from earlier versions uh, of SSAS into 2014 will give you performance, scalability, better development tools. Uh, one of the things it gives you, and I'm going to transition to my good friend Paul, is the tabular model. So we talk at this point in time with the multidimensional, which is still the most popular uh, cube platform in the market. Uh, but the tabular model is coming along to provide some, some very nice streamlined capabilities. Uh, make sure, of course, you back up all your databases. And finally, a redesign should not be needed in the multidimensional model. So at this point in time, let me turn it over to Paul. All right. Well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate that. So um, I'm going to talk about uh, implementing tabular models. Now, we're on the topic of upgrading to newer versions of SQL Server, and I've very explicitly chosen the word implementing here for good reason, which I'm going to talk about. Analysis Services tabular models are authored with SQL Server data tools for BI. And when we talk about BI tools in uh, another presentation that we're doing today, we'll talk uh, specifically about the difference between SSDT and SSDT BI. But this is in the BI tools, which is very similar to the bids environment that we've had in previous versions of, of SQL Server and Visual Studio. So uh, this is uh, both uh, a, a add-in that is installed with uh, the SQL Server 2012 and SQL Server 2014 client tools as well as separate downloads that uh, are specific for Visual Studio 2012, Visual Studio 2013, and now Visual Studio 2014. Um, and it adds these project templates. And much like we've had bids in the past, it adds uh, the reporting services and integration services, and now both uh, analysis services multidimensional as well as analysis services tabular. And uh, tabular projects and tabular models were added in SQL Server 2012. And at that time, in pre-release, uh, it was commonly referred to as BISM, or the BI semantic model. And, and that terminology has changed a little bit. I don't think that term is used quite so much. But it's based on the X-Velocity in-memory analytic engine. It's always been a mouthful, but it's fun to say. And uh, the, the, the earlier and internal name for X-Velocity was VertiPack. And this is a real compelling technology that essentially takes all of the data in the model in compressed form and loads it all up into memory. And so when users query the data, they're never reading from disk. There's never any I.O. cost. It's always pulled directly out of memory. And of course, reading from memory is, is typically a lot faster than, than reading from disk. Now, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about this choice between multidimensional and tabular and where uh, that line can be a little confusing and how do you make that choice. Well, one thing to, to really um, keep in mind is that multidimensional technology evolved at a time when data had to be stored on disk. It had to be stored physically on spinning disks. And so it was really optimized to make the best use of storage, whereas tabular is really all about optimizing memory, accessing data from memory, compressing and decompressing from memory, and using techniques like column store, which, uh, of course, we're, we're seeing in other features in SQL Server. So it uses column store compression. Calculations are defined using a new expression language called data analysis expressions rather than MDX, multidimensional expressions, which were used in multidimensional. Uh, however, 
a client that knows how to run MDX or generate MDX queries can also talk to tabular. So for example, Excel always uses MDX and uh, that'll work against a tabular model just, just as well as it will a multidimensional model. So it can be consumed by, by any tools that really know how to talk to uh, earlier versions of analysis services. So you see that in the screenshot here, you see uh, Visual Studio 2013 in the dark mode. This was introduced with Visual Studio 2013, so I used this when I captured the screen. This is the model designer, which is actually very similar to the same model designer that we have in Power Pivot for Excel with some added features and capabilities. So on the topic of upgrading to Tabular, when Tabular was first introduced, when SQL Server 2012 was in preview, um, there was this rush to migrate or upgrade multidimensional models to tabular because it was the new thing. And what we learned, and we had some of our developers at Solid Q went to work on a conversion tool because the metadata was compatible. You could grab the metadata from multidimensional and quote unquote convert it to tabular. And though that was possible, it wasn't optimal. So the thing to know about these technologies is that multidimensional serves an important purpose. It's a, it's a very relevant technology that has a feature set that's very relevant and it's going to endure for a long time and it solves certain problems. Tabular is new, true, and it's less mature. It doesn't have a lot of the same features, but it does some things better than multidimensional. It, since everything's in memory, it tends to be a little faster. It's a little quicker to develop tabular models, uh, but it doesn't have all of those same features. And so there is no upgrade path from multidimensional to tabular. The migration path is really a do-over. The good news there is that tabular models are generally pretty easy to design and they work well sitting on top of the, star, the same kind of star schemas that we would typically build cubes on top of, but they also work on other database schemas and work with disconnected and disparate data sets um, in, in a way that multidimensional wouldn't support. So there are some differences there. So um, a power pivot for Excel model can be migrated to a tabular server model. I'm going to demonstrate that pretty quick. And uh, there are actually two different versions of tabular, two different XML schemas to define the model. The first was introduced with SQL Server 2012. Internally, the version number is 1100 or 11.00. And then in SQL Server 2012 Service Pack 1, the schema was updated to version 1103, and that's actually the most current version of the um, tabular model schema as we speak. Um, there's a great paper uh, um, from Alberto Ferrari on uh, a case study for a, a, a large enterprise scale tabular solution, which uh, I would uh, highly recommend. So. Do I choose multidimensional or tabular? I, I, I speak about this at SQL Saturdays and in conference talks, and um, I, I start out by saying, this is not a real clear choice. It's, it's really hard to say always, always, always use multidimensional or always, always use tabular. It, it depends. We say that a lot in consulting, don't we, Jim? <laughs> Um, multidimensional utilizes um, the existing MDX language. Uh, it's a very mature technology. Uh, multidimensional was introduced in SQL Server 7, so it's been around for doing the math in my head, I think 12 or 13 years now, and it's grown up and matured, as is the MDX language. So there, there's a lot of skills out there, a lot of people who know how to use it, and it's a very mature product, and, and there are a lot of good reasons to use that. So it has a very rich feature set. Um, tabular models are generally a little easier to design. Um, they're very streamlined. And so we use them when you may have a large volume of data. You may have complex problems to solve that require a lot of complex and conditional calculations. So it does that really well. But we typically don't use tabular when you have very, very complex schemas with things like many-to-many -many relationships. And that's an area where I think multidimensional actually excels over tabular in that it, it's real good at managing very complex schemas of data, not that we can't solve some of those problems using, uh, uh, let's say, creative techniques with tabular, but it may not be optimized um, to do that. So, so Paul, I, I saw outside of the domain of tabular was the uh, parent-child relationship. Mm -hmm which would be very common, say, with a cost center or an employee table. So would you look at that and rule out tabular, or would you say, well, 
there could be a workaround for tabular with with that. I particular. wouldn't, and I wouldn't even use the term workaround to, without kind of getting into the weeds on this topic, which is a very, very good question and a very interesting topic. So it's parent-child is is absolutely doable with tabular, but it's something you have to explicitly design for. Whereas in multidimensional, you point it at a self-referencing table where you have a key and a parent key, and you say, go read that data and build a hierarchy based on the existing data, and it just does it. Okay. Whereas in tabular, I have to go explicitly define the levels of that hierarchy. Okay. And there's actually um, some really good reference material out at uh, DAX Patterns and uh, the, the SQL BI folks, uh, Marco and Alberto, who are very familiar in the, in the community, have written some great papers about this topic and okay. have solved that problem in some creative ways. So from a practical perspective, you would look at parent-child, say that's a requirement, but it wouldn't necessarily rule out tabular. You'd want to look more closely maybe at the number of levels that are involved within your uh, parent-child hierarchy or something like that. Yeah, and, and I would say that we have much less flexibility there solving that particular problem with tabular. So that, that's, that, that, that's a yellow flag in my mind okay. on, on a new project. Okay. Uh, many-to-many is also another one of those. So we can, we can resolve many-to-many -many relationships where the typical scenario is where you have a, a fact table and a dimension table and you've got a bridge in the middle where a fact can be related to a dimensional attribute through multiple branches. Right. And um, we, we don't get the same behavior in tabular if you were, were browsing that data in Excel or through a reporting tool, but in, in a DAX calculation, we can, we can have provisions in that uh, expression or query mm -hmm. to resolve different branches of that relationship. But again, it, it depends, and it's not an out-of-the-box behavior. So that's another one of those right. yellow yeah. flags yeah. Okay. as we're gathering requirements. So um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and take a look at uh, a related technology. PowerPivot for Excel was actually the first implementation of Vertipak or XVelocity that we saw before Tabular was released with SQL Server 2012. And we've actually seen the this, this same technology now implemented in column store indexes and in SQL Server and in newer features in memory. Um, optimizations that we see in SQL Server 2014 now. So uh, this, this whole in-memory thing has really caught on, and it's, it, it, it's good news for the right kinds of, of reporting and, and data management scenarios. So uh, PowerPivot was introduced with Excel 2010 as an add-in. It's, it's out native with Excel 2013, the Pro Plus edition. You just have to turn the add-in on. And the reason that I, I bring this up in this presentation about SQL Server is that you can actually author a tabular model in PowerPivot, and then you can deploy that directly to an analysis services instance in tabular storage mode. And I'm going to, to show that here. 